Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it's going to be an updated World Chalice deck profile for the post-February 5th, 2018 format, as well as being the first list that I'm putting up that is also post-Extreme Forces. We got some additional options given to the deck from Extreme Forces, as well as from the ban list giving us cards back, but then we also lost options of things that we could play like gofu and dandelion one of our firewalls and stuff like that so basically i've been asked relentlessly over the past 24 to 36 hours over you know what do we do what do we play because a lot of people you know they look at me as an authority on this deck because i mess around with it so much i i probably put more raw theory into this deck than anything else that i've played in the entire year of 2017 by this point but basically, this is a skeleton list that I've come up with. Uh, I've tested a bunch of things out in the last day. Uh, I know there's things that I don't like. I still don't like the Eva package. It bricks too heavily with the cards that we currently have. Uh, I don't like the Recover engine. I tested that to try and make Naturia Beast because I expect Pendulum Magicians to still be a top two, if not best deck going into the format. Uh, because Pendulums are still very powerful. Uh, there's a lot of different things that I tested, but basically it all culminated down to a really streamlined list that tries to do the best things it can, the best ways it possibly can, as effectively as possible, and so that's what I'm going to show you in this video. This is basically a list that I'm going to be starting to build off of and try to test more and maybe have some cards swap in and out for different placeholders, uh, but other than that, like this list is pretty much like as streamlined as I can make a list for the new format. Uh, that operated on a most consistent basis. So anyway, list is 40 cards. It starts with three Lee, the World Chalice Fairy. If you're playing any less than three of this, then we have some uh, priorities that you need to discuss with yourself. Uh, and the same thing with World Legacy, World Chalice. If you're not playing three of each, uh, then you're going to be having consistency problems with your list, and that is something that you could avoid by playing three of each card. Uh, but then carrying on three copies of World Chalice Guard Dragon and then three copies of Chosen by the World Chalice. I'm playing 12 World Chalice names because most people will play like two World Chalice Guard Dragon, but this card's really good against Time Pendulum Graph, and like I just said, I expect Pendulum Magicians to still be, you know, relatively good, if not the dominating force of the format, because Pendulums still have a lot of consistency cards at their disposal outside of the cards that got hit. It does make it a little bit more luck-based in terms of them getting to the trap, but they can still make plays. Uh, to get to it and like this is just an extender as well as being a hand trap So I felt like it was something that I should play three of you could play two of it if you want to it's honestly personal preference But I like three specifically because it's the 12th name I want a lot of world chalice names in my hands to be able to special summon freely off my link monsters Especially since firewalls at one now and we're trying to make Saryuja and stuff like that uh, I want as many extenders in my hand as possible to either make it to where I don't need Venus for the play string, or to make it to where my Venus play is even more broken. Uh, so, like, that's that's why I'm playing this ratio. Uh, you could play another card in place of a Guard Dragon, but honestly, uh, no other card really did as much as just the Guard Dragon being there was, because it's an extender, as well as being reborn, as well as being a hand trap. So, that's good. But anyway, three copies of Venus, three copies of Shine Ball. This is a given if you're not... If you're still obstinate and not playing these cards in World Chalice by now, then I don't know how you're planning on having success with the deck. This card is by far the best card in the entire deck. The only card that even like slightly remotely changes uh, what's the best card in the deck is like World Legacy World Chalice. Like that's the only card that slightly competes with Venus. Uh, but anyway, two copies of Exodius, the Ultimate Forbidden Lord. Uh, we lost Dandelion, we lost Gofu, um, so we lost two quality like starter slash extender cards, specifically Gofu. Uh, you could draw Exodius in a hand that also had Gofu and didn't have access to Venus, and you'd be able to like at least drop the Exodius for one, uh, and it was you know an extender. It wasn't amazing, but it was still an extender, putting a monster on field. But now with Gofu gone, Exodius is really heavily reliant on you getting to Venus pretty early, um, and like the only other op like use this thing has is like top decking it late in the game to like reset your extra deck pool. Uh, but that's not really that uh, relevant. It's not super relevant. If you haven't won the game and you've run through your entire extra deck, uh, then like there was probably some things that you did wrong by that point, or the game was probably unwinnable even if you did top deck Exodius. Uh, but regardless, uh, you never want to see multiples of this card, so I'm playing two of it right now. Um, you could swap the Guard Dragon out for a third copy of this, uh, but Guard Dragon is more versatile in the simpler game states. Uh, than Exodius is, because Exodius is purely an extender, whereas Guard Dragon is, again, like I said, a hand trap, 
uh, a reborn card, stuff like that. It just, has, it just has more value, so that's why I'm playing two and three of that. But if you want to swap them around, you can. Uh, but anyway, carrying on one copy of Gym Knight Lazuli to be my Brilliant Fusion target. Uh, I still don't prefer Garnet because I'd like to be able to resolve this if possible. I mean, I understand why you'd play Garnet. I played Garnet for a little bit of time. Uh, but Lazuli is just like... I'm not in the business of trying to make my bad hands better because your bad hands are going to still be bad hands. Um, and you're still going to be handicapped for the rest of the game if you draw Garnet plus Brilliant Fusion. Whereas with uh, Lazuli, like, you have the same amount of chance to draw it as you do Garnet. Sure, it makes your bad hands remain bad hands, but it makes your good hands and your okay hands better. And that's why I prefer the card. I prefer cards that heighten my ceiling versus cards that are like, oh, these are safe to play, like Garnet. But it's just a personal preference matter. You can play Garnet if you want. I'm not going to crucify you for that. It's not like it's a card like Eva that requires way too many bricks in your deck to be viable. But anyway, carrying on. I'm playing five Hand Traps. I'm playing three Ash Blossom and three Ghost Ogre. Uh, I'm playing, or not three Ghost Ogre, two Ghost Ogre. Um, I'm playing Ghost Ogre specifically because it's really good against uh, both Spiral and Pendulum Magicians right now. Because, like, uh, you you uh, can Ghost Ogre, like, the one resort if they open it. You can Ghost Ogre Helix and they can't resolve Master Plan. And the deck usually runs out of steam very easily now because there's less resorts. Um... But uh, it's also just really good against Pendulum Magicians. If you uh, let them summon Electromite, and then they use Electromite's effect on summon to put a card into their extra deck, you just Ghost Ogre it, and they lost actual resources to make that Electromite. Um, and so I'm, I'm okay with that. Like, I prefer playing Hand Traps in this deck over regular Traps anyway. Because they are monsters, that means they are combo pieces, because they can be discarded for, uh, for a Lee to be added back, as well as they can be used and then added back to your hand off of, uh, off of your uh, Firewall Dragon. That's the one. The, the literal one, in fact. Uh, but yeah, so just five hand traps. I feel like there's not any need for any more right now. Uh, the format's very undefined currently. Uh, but one copy of Gamma Seal, the Sea Turtle Kaiju, is the last monster in my deck. This is, I believe, the 27th monster. Um, it's just, it's for your Kyoto Waterfront play, and then it's also decent going second, because you can just flop it over a monster like a Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon or something like that. But you side pretty heavily for that matchup, if that's something you want to... Uh, if you want to play the second in an event, you side pretty heavily, like, for a lot of matchups. So, it's not really make or break if you have Gamma Seal or not. But going on to the spells, two copies of Kyoto Waterfront. Not playing three, not playing Terraforming to go with it. Uh, you're trying to do all of your turn one plays now. You're trying to resolve an Ingirsu draw for at least two, and then also resolve Saryuja. Usually, you do only draw two off an Ingirsu because that makes a more economical Saryuja later. But then the Saryuja draws four cards and you put three back. So you still drew three cards. You're still at the same net gain in terms of cards drawn as the old combos. But you see more cards overall, meaning that you get to pick the three worst cards out of your hand and put them on the bottom of your deck rather than just drawing three random cards and being stuck with them whether they're good or bad. So you see this card relatively easily. Um, and then you still also have the same Trigate Wizard plays that we had access to previously. And Saryuja makes Trigate Wizard kind of beefy. It brings it up to 25. <laughs> so, like, there's that as well. Uh, but three copies of Brilliant Fusion. I don't think I would play this deck without Brilliant Fusion in it. If Brilliant Fusion went to one, like, on a list in the future, I don't think I would play this deck, honestly. Because, like, you need to get access to Lee rather quickly. And this card actually just has better value now more than ever. Because, like, you can open Brilliant Fusion plus Monster Reborn. And, like, you can just send Venus, and you can Monster Reborn Venus, or Soul Charge Venus. You now have two Reborn cards in your deck that you can use to just start your play string. And also make the deck more uh, uh, more versatile at playing through hand traps. Because, like, your Venus can get Ghost Ogred, and you can Reborn it now. Like, it's actually just really cool. And then in the future, we get another Monster Reborn card in the form of World Legacy Inheritor. Like, this deck actually gets kind of wild once we get, like, the Troy Mare cards and Flames of Destruction and stuff like that. Uh, but carrying on, one copy of Transmodify, uh, and one copy of Foolish... Uh, as well as one copy of Emergency Teleport, one copy of Unexpected Die, the Soul Charge, and the one copy of Monster Reborn. Six one-ups. Uh, six one-up spells. Uh, Transmodify, I'm playing because we did lose a... Even though Gofu wasn't amazing, it was a quality starter. Uh, so this is just trying to pick up the slack. Um, I'm pretty sure that like I can just put my opponent on better habit. Uh, with Ash Blossom with this card playing one of it. I, I feel kind of safe. Like I just feel safer playing this over not playing it right now. Uh, as the format develops into what hand traps are being run and uh, how decks are being built, then I'll decide whether or not this gets bumped up to two or if it gets cut and the deck doesn't need it. Uh, but Foolish is another consistency enabler. 
uh, has the same combo with like Reborn, if you can like Foolish Venus and then Reborn it. Uh, e Telly and Unexpected Die. Unexpected Die I'm only playing one of because it has to be the very first card you play. Uh, so it's dead if you draw it off Saryuja or off of Ningirsu. I mean, I guess you can put it back off of Saryuja, but still, it's it's a card that I'm not okay with playing multiples of right now. And I'm basically playing a different card that fills the same role. So there's no reason to mac like play any more than one Unexpected Die. Especially since Reborn exists now. Like Reborn sort of basically just took the slot of the other Unexpected Die. Speaking of Reborn, I didn't think we'd ever play with this card again. This card got banned in 2013 for basically only a, what I can see as a reason of Konami wanted to mix things up between the TCG and OCG format. Uh, this was banned on the first list that we had that was finally separated from the OCG format list, uh, and now we finally have it back. Uh, so, it's interesting. Uh, this card does a lot, specifically in Link format, because of the fact that you can bring your stuff back to any zone. Uh, so you can just do plays like make your one Firewall Dragon and make it co-linked to two or three cards, add two to three monsters back to your hand, and then link away with it, and then reborn it back over into the zone where you want it. Uh, so it's actually really cool. It's a really cool extender. Uh, the days of, like, monster reborning a monster back from either player's graveyard and swinging for game with it are practically over. That's why I think this card came back. Uh, like, that, that sort of degeneracy, like was something that happened in simpler Yu-Gi-Oh! where you could just top deck a win condition. But now Monster Reborn is almost always just... Like, even in the days before it was getting banned, um, it was just being used as a combo extender, like the best combo extender in your deck because it was any monster that you had already used. Uh, so I think the card is fine and is going to promote a lot of cool combos being uh, spawned into the future and a lot of weird deck choices being played around it, specifically because it exists. Uh, but then the last two cards in the deck are two copies of the Phantom Knights of uh, Shade Brigandine. I'm playing two of this because you do necessarily really want to see it, and you want to see it at any time during your turn. Uh, off your Ningirsu draw, if you draw this, set it, activate it. Free normal monster, easy. Uh, if you draw it off Saryuja, set it, activate it. Free normal monster, easy. Free Imduk. Um, but it's okay to draw uh, doubles of these because we have Saryuja now. Uh, you can put Sar you can put one back on the bottom of your deck with Saryuja, or it doesn't even really matter if you did like just hard draw two or if you drew into two and had to keep both of them for some reason. Because you can set one and activate it the turn that you set it, and then you can just set the other one and then flip it next turn to be an extender uh, if you're playing one of those slower, grindy games, or if you're just, you know, wanting something for a game shot, or if you just want to make an Imduk randomly uh, to make your turn structure better turn two. Uh, it seems fine. But this card is vastly superior to Unexpected Die uh, in the areas of when you can activate it and when you can draw it and, like, in terms of how it helps you combo. The only downside is, is that it doesn't actually put a vanilla in your grave, so you can't be like... One of the plays with Unexpected Die is like you can Unexpected Die out Chosen, make Link Spider, then Brilliant Fusion, send Lazuli, and then add Chosen back, and that's a really good play. That doesn't exist with this card, but there are other plays that are already warranted by this card, by the fact that it is still Imduk without you normal summoning. So, uh, that's, that's good. <laughs> it's, it's, all, it's always just very good. But anyway, continuing on for the extra deck, the one copy of Firewall, and then the one copy of Saryuja Skulldred for the rank 4s. I'm not paying insane amounts of money for a Saryuja right now. I'll wait for it to go down in price. I don't really plan on playing World Chalice at YCS Atlanta as of right now, so I don't necessarily need a Saryuja. So the proxy will do for now. Uh, but basically, Saryuja, um, it's very weird. It's a very weird card to make because it requires a lot of resources to make, and you want to make it with only four monsters. I know you may be thinking, what do you mean only four monsters? I mean, you don't want to be making this with like a Link 2 and then three other monsters because then you made this with five monsters. Um, it's very weird. It, it introduces some weird play strings and combo sequences into the deck in terms of how you get max value out of this. Um, and like it, it changes around a lot of like the numbers as well because of you drawing four and putting the three worst cards in your deck back on bottom of your deck. Uh, but mainly the main combos you do with this deck now are very conservative Ningirsu combos to like draw two by having a Link Spider and having Ningirsu and then two World Chalices next to it. Uh, and then you make Saryuja with one, two, three, four, including the Link Spider to summon Saryuja up top. And then you draw uh, four cards and put three back. So you're still drawing three cards like the olden days, but you're seeing more cards, meaning it is a more consistent draw. And you're not wasting excessive resources to do it. That's the that's the main point I'm trying to say. But anyway, carrying on to the Link 3s, uh, Guy Saber, Ningirsu, and Trigate Wizard. Uh, Guy Saber is a flexible spot. This was a uh, Naturia Beast. Uh, in the recover build that I was testing, but then when I just took the uh, when I took the beckons out, took the recover out, uh, I just put Guy Saber back in uh, because I feel like this card's more verse like more uh, more relevant than Deco Talker because it does point straight down and it contributes to your extra link. Uh, but this is a flexible spot. This could be a second Orum. This could be um, a Deco Talker. Uh, it could be a few different things. It could be another link two, which is probably going to be when we get Troy Mares. 
Uh, the one thing I wouldn't make it is a boar load. This deck almost never makes boar load because you're not trying to out your opponent's monsters in the battle phase. Like, when your deck is actually playing its turn structures out, you're outing two cards a turn within Girsu, and then outing a card with Trigate Wizard, and then you can out one to two or three more cards with Firewall Dragon. Like, you out enough cards before you enter the battle phase. <laughs> it's not that big of an issue. Uh, but then one copy of Orem for Link 2s, uh, alongside two copies of Eve and one copy of Proxy Dragon. Uh, just pretty standard. Uh, the Troy Mare cards mess around with these ratios, but we don't have those yet, so not even going to even think about what the ratios would be. Uh, two copies of Link Spider. This actually does come up a lot more now than it used to. Uh, you could just get away with playing one Link Spider in the past, but now, specifically with Saryuja, you end up making Link Spider, and then using Link Spider with like three other materials um, to make your Saryuja, whether it's at the start of your play string or after you've made Dengirsu. Uh, so, like, you kind of need the second one for your extra link if that's what you're going for. Uh, so it actually does come up into a lot more now than it used to. But other than that, three copies of Imduk, as per usual, like, every combo requires you to make two to three of these. Uh, so it's just, it's an easy card to make, it's an easy extender, turns your Shine Balls into World Chalice names. Uh, no reason not to max out on it until we get better extra deck options. And then the one Gym Knight Seraph Knight to be playing with the brilliant fusion so that's the entire deck right now it's a it's as streamlined as i could get it i was trying to play other things i did test eva uh with like sir Yuja and all that stuff just because like i was testing new format options didn't like it again herald of the orange light is pretty terrible in terms of hand traps go uh and like we don't have the cards to even remotely start making that card good yet like summon sorceress uh, or Crystron Needle Fiber, and even then the card is still wishy-washy in terms of how good it is, but I'm not going to go into detail on that here. I may have an entire video dedicated to that subject because I kept getting asked about it. Uh, but otherwise, this list is very streamlined. Like I told you, like I said, I was playing like Beckons, I was testing Baguska, I was testing uh, actual traps in the deck like Triple Bottomless and uh, Judgment. Uh, I've been testing a lot of things in the last 24 hours, uh, but basically, this was the list that I was testing and gave me the best results because of how streamlined it is. It was the easiest to side with, it was the easiest to just open turn one, you know, combos and just do very well. It was the easiest to mold my plays into Saryuja, get into Kyoto Waterfront, do all that sort of stuff. There, it's just, it was the easiest thing for me to build and play, and it just, it had the best results. Like, this deck already has consistency issues, so trying to be fancy with other engines and stuff like that that introduce more bricks into the deck, ultimately, even though it may heighten your ceiling and some, introduce some weird play lines, it just ultimately wasn't worthwhile in the end, and just going with something that was tried and true and tested and being very streamlined about the operation was the best way to go about business. But anyway, that is the deck list. Give me your feedback in the comments down below. If you're interested in any questions, feel free to ask. I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Even though I may be a little bit harsh, it is not meant as a personal attack to you. Keep that in mind. I just have a very direct dialect in terms of how I type and how I speak. So I'm not trying to belittle you. <laughs> I feel like I need to just say this now. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like I said, give me your comments and feedback in the comments down below. As always, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Check out the links in the description if you're interested in connecting with me through other platforms. But other than that, thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video. But now that the video's over, I'd like to give special thanks to my patrons, Iradium, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertson, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else supporting in the lower tiers. You guys help make what I'm doing here continue to be possible. You have my eternal gratitude, as always, and you're forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.